Good day and welcome to D to your next lesson uh, in uh, polynomials. To the topic today is multiplying binomials and our goal is to extend out distributive law property to multiplying binomials. So far with the distributive property we've only multiplied monomials and just a quick recap if we have 3x and we multiply it by 2x plus 4 the distributive property says that I multiply the monomial through the front and 3x x times 2x is 6x squared, and then 3x times 4x is plus 12x. So that was the distributive property that we recapped yesterday. So now we want to extend it to multiplying binomials. And you'll remember that a binomial is, say, 2x plus 3, and we want to be able to multiply that by 5x minus 4. How do we do that? Well, to start off, uh, I'm going to go back to just multiplying two-digit numbers, and we're going to turn our two-digit number into actually a binomial. So I want you to notice that this 17 can be written kind of like a binomial if I say that it's 10 plus 7. And the same with this 26. I can write it kind of as a binomial. I can write it as two constants with a plus or a minus between them. And we get 20 plus 6. Now what this does is it gives us a little bit of an interesting way to multiply this. If I call this side 17 and this side over here is our 26, uh, instead of just saying it's 17 by 26, and you guys hopefully know that the area will be 17 times 26, the area of this whole space will be 17 times 26, um, I'm going to write it as a binomial and say that this strip here is 10 and this strip here is 7, which makes the whole thing 17. And this strip here is going to be my 20 and this strip down here is going to be my 6. So the whole side length is 26. And I'm going to find each of these individual squares areas because those numbers are easier. This square up here, it has dimensions 20 by 10. So its area is 200. This square over here, if we carry this 10 over from there, it has, whoops, uh, shoot. Sorry about that. Uh, it has, um, this is 10 as well, so its dimensions are 6 by 10, so its total area is 60. Now, this uh, rectangle down here, its dimensions are 7, and then again, from this up here, that 20 is also down there because it's a rectangle. So its dimensions are 20 by 7, which is 140. And then lastly over here, we've got the dimension of 6 by 7, which is 42. Now those numbers are actually pretty easy to add up in our head. If I take 200 and I add 140, I get 340. Add in a 60, I get 400, and so then it's 442. So that tells me that since that has an area of 442, that 26, or 17 times 26, equals 442. And that's actually pretty quick. It's a little bit quicker than some of the other um, models that you use to multiply two-digit numbers. And it also perform gives us a basis of how what we're going to do with binomials. Since these two things were essentially a binomial in the first place, they just don't have a variable attached to them. So let's have a look uh, at a few more. And I would suggest right now that you pause this video and try to fill these in on your own. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and do them. So this part A, uh, I'm going to say this side is 50 plus 3 for 53. And this over here is 10 and 8 for 18. And 50 times 10 is 500. And over here, this one is going to be 3 times 10 is 30. 50 times 8 is 400, and 8 times 3 is 24. And so if I add them all up, I got 500, and 400 is 900, so that's 930, 954. 
Um, for B, I'm going to call this 40 and this 2 for 42. And this one's going to be 10 and 4. So this is 400 in here, um, 160 here, 20 over here, and 4 times 2 is 8 over here. So that's 400, 560, 580, 588. So 42 times 14 is 588. Now going down uh, over here, I'm going to do C. Um, I'm not going to call this 30 and 9, though. I'm actually going to call it 40 and negative 1. Because remember, binomials can be written with either an addition or a subtraction between it. And then I'll use 10 and 5 down here. So this is 400. This here, although talking about a negative area is kind of silly, but it's still going to be 10 times negative 1, which is negative 10. 5 times 40 is 20, two, sorry, 200. And negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. So now when I put this together, uh, 400 and 200 is 600, uh, but then I have to subtract 10 off of that, so that's 590. And taking another 5 off of that is 585. So this one is 585. And lastly, over here, 72 times 82, we got 70 and 2, and 80 and 2. Uh, 70 times 80 is, is 5,600. 80 times 2 is 160. 2 times 70 is 140. And 2 times 2 is 4. So we got 5,600, uh, 5,740, um, 57... Uh, 59 and 4, so 5904. Okay, now what does this have to do with multiplying binomials? Uh, well, we're going to use the area model again um, for looking at binomials. So really what it's going to be is four multiplications of, of monomials. So for this area here, I have to multiply the 2x and the 3x. And 2x times 3x gives us 6x squared. Now, this area down here is from the 7 and the 3x. And 7 times 3x is 21x. Now, over in this corner is dimensions 2x and 4. And 2x times 4 is 8x. And lastly, down here, we get the 7 and the 4 is the 28. And so if we put it all together, our area is going to be 6x squared um, plus 8x plus 21x plus 28. And of course, those two terms in the middle right here can be combined, and we get 6x squared plus 29x plus 28. Now hopefully you can see that there's a pattern to this. We don't have to draw this box every single time. Um, that basically all we did was multiply everything by something else. I took this 2x and multiplied it by the 3x to get 6x squared. Then I took the 2x and multiplied it by the 4 to get 8x. Well, we don't have to um, draw it in a box to get that, we could say, I took this 2x, and I first multiplied it by the 3x to get that 6x squared. I multiplied that. Then I took the 2x, and I multiplied it by the 4 to get the 8x. And that's not just distributive law. We've done distributive law before where we take some number that's in front of a bracket and multiply it in. The difference here is that we've also got this 7, and it needs to go through the brackets as well. 7 times 3x, and that's where we got this 21x when we did the area model. And then 7 times 4 is where we got this 28x when we did the area model. And so if I just look at them all individually, I say, okay, I have to take 2x and multiply it by 3x, I get 6x squared. Then I take the 2x and multiply it by the 4, which gives me plus 8x. Then I take the 7 and multiply it by the 3, I get plus 21x. And then I take the 7 and multiply it by the 4, and I get 28. And that's all there is to it. I like to call this double distributive law because you're just using the distributive law twice. Um, but your 
the textbook is going to refer to this as FOIL. And the reason it refers to this as FOIL, and I'll do another one just to show you. Uh, FOIL stands for first, outside, inside, last. And so when you use FOIL, you take the first term from each bracket and you multiply them together. And so you get 10x squared as your first term or your F term for FOIL. And then you take the outside terms from each bracket, the ones that are on the edge of each bracket, and you multiply them together to get your outside term, which is plus 45x. Then the two inside terms, the ones that are on the edges on the inside of the brackets, they multiply together to give you your inside terms, which is minus 6x. And last, you take the last term in each bracket, that 3 and the 9, and you multiply those together, and that gives you minus 27. So that gives you the last term. And then, of course, you have to combine anything that combines. And the middle two terms, for most of our multiplying binomials, will likely combine. And you just have to write it out as 10x squared plus 39x minus 27. And so if you want to remember first, outside, inside, last, I'll sometimes talk about foiling it out. Your textbook talks about using foil. I'll sometimes talk about your O and your I terms. If I'm talking about your O and your I terms, I'm talking about these two things. So it's more terminology than anything. I don't like to call it foil because it's basically just the distributive law. So we're going to do a few of these. Um, and when I ask you to do... Uh, when I mean for you to do double distributive law or FOIL to expand, um, usually what I will say is expand and simplify. And so we're going to expand this out. 3x times 7x is 21x squared. 3x times 2 is plus 6x. Negative 6 times 7x is negative 42x. And negative 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. And that's all there is to it. We do the simplifying part, which means I put the two middle terms together because they're both x's. Can't put x squareds and x's together, so be careful with that. And this is going to be minus 36x when I put negative 6x with neg or positive 6x with negative 42. And of course, that minus 12 is on the end as well. Now, expanding brackets when there's also a mon monomial out front, um, you can put that monomial into the first bracket if you would like to, uh, but know that it only goes into the first bracket. This is like saying 5 times 4 times 3. If you did 5 times 4 times 3, you would first say, well, 5 times 4 is 20, and you get your answer, and then you multiply your answer times 3, which is 60. You don't actually multiply the 5 times the 4 and times the 3, or you're going to get a bigger answer. So you could multiply the 5 into the first bracket, get an answer, and then your answer, multiply it into the second bracket. However, it's easier, it's a little bit easier this way. It's usually easier arithmetic to expand and simplify the brackets first, then multiply your answer by the front number. It's important to remember that we only multiply by the front number once. So I'm going to suggest that this is how you do it. You put the negative 5, keep it out front, and then foil out or use double distributive law on these things. And so... That's going to be 8x squared minus 20x minus 12x plus 30. And that's going to be negative 5x squared minus 32x plus 30. And you can see our numbers probably would have gotten really big if we put that negative 5 through first. But now I'm going to put the negative 5 through the brackets. And remember that when you multiply through the brackets by negative number, signs are going to change. Now, this is the last example we're going to do together. And this one basically has two questions inside this question. So we're going to think about expanding and simplifying each part of these individually 
And then once we're done, we're going to put them together. So you got to be careful with that. And here's our tip. Treat each set of brackets as its own question. When you are done expanding and simplifying each set, you will collect like terms between the two. So I'm going to do the same thing here as I did up there. I'm going to expand the brackets first, and I get 5x squared. And if you can collect like terms in, on the outside and the inside in your head, then you can um, skip a step of writing. That's the outside terms here is going to give me 25x and then 2x, and those are going to go together to be 27x. And then the last two terms, the 2 times the 5 gives us plus 10. Minus 2, now I'm going to expand these ones. x times x gives me x squared, and again, I'm going to try to do this one in my head. x times 4 is negative 4x, and 2 times x is 2x. So negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2x. And then 2 times negative 4 gives me negative 8. Now, if you can't do that middle term in your head, go right ahead and write it down. So now I'm going to put the 3 through the brackets, and I get 15x squared plus 81x plus 30. And now I'm going to multiply the negative 2 through this bracket, and I get negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 16. And once you're done doing that, now it's a matter of collecting like terms between the two. 15x squared minus 2x squared gives me 13x squared. 81x and 4x gives me plus 85x. And positive 30 and positive 16 gives me plus 46. And we're done. I do apologize for the little slip up earlier in the uh, video, um, but hopefully you now know how to multiply binomials.